last but not least, let's look at the GMM stochastic discount factor way of estimating an asset pricing model, a linear factor model of the type that we've been looking at. What we would do is write the moment condition, 0 equals E of MR, write the discount factor as a linear function of the factor. Uh, now, I, I, I normalize that to 1 because we're not going to use the level of the risk-free rate, so we don't identify the level of the discount factor. It's arbitrary. And I also took out the mean of the factor here. That's going to generate covariances instead of second moments and, and look prettier and work better. So our discount factor is 1 minus a linear function of the de-mean factor return. OK, there's our discount factor. There's our moments. GMM, here we go. The GT is expected M times R. The D matrix, the derivative of GT with respect to the factor B, is just E of R times F. That's all that's left over. And E of R times a D mean F is the same thing as the covariance of R with F. So I'll call that C. That's a vector of covariances of uh, each of the different returns with the factor. Let's approach, let's do the minimization GMM. So we'll minimize GT, GT prime WGT. The first order condition is D prime WGT equals zero. So let's write out what that means. We're going to do GMM right here on the board. D prime WGT equals zero. D is the same as C, the covariance matrix. There's two terms to the GT, expected return and the RF prime. So let's take that term over on the left-hand side. C prime W expected return. Let's take that one and put it over on the right-hand side. C prime W expected return times F times B. Expected return times F is another covariance, and then the B there. Our job, solve that for B. B is C prime W C inverse, C prime W expected return. Aha! The GMM estimate is simply a cross-sectional regression of expected returns on covariances. Well, that makes abundant sense. I mean, just, just think about the model. M is 1 minus BF, 0 equals E of MR. We've seen over and over again how that can be written as expected return is covariance of return times this B, the unknown parameter B, which takes the place of the lambda in, in the standard formulation. So uh, just perfectly natural, if you saw this and you were told, go find an estimate of B, you say, well, why don't we run the n expected return on the n covariances as an OLS or GLS cross-sectional regression, and that's how we'll estimate B. That is exactly what GMM tells you to do. Uh, and then fill in the blanks on your own for standard errors. Now you may say, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's this expected value of the factor. How do I know that? That's part of the same sample, and indeed it is. We've seen this before too. As with the Shankin correction, a proper distribution theory has to recognize that that's estimated in the same sample as everything else. And we can approach it in exactly the same way. GMM is very good for these generated regressor problems. Just stack up the moments that describe how you estimate the mean of the factor and the moments that as how you, how you then run the cross-sectional regression given the mean of the factor, exactly as we did for the Schenken uh, correction. And that gives you a GMM distribution theory that incorporates that first stage estimation. So the GMM stochastic discount factor is in fact very similar to the cross-sectional regression, which is very similar to the time series regression. Uh, in this case, it amounts to just a cross-sectional regression of mean returns on covariances. If you leave out this step, you get a cross-sectional return of mean returns on second moments. And second moments are about the same thing as covariance. Again, not much difference. If it makes a big difference, something's either deeply wrong with your model or deeply wrong with your computer program.